Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. Today we are going to solve the sixth challenge in Ethernet, which is delegation. Now we are going to use Foundry to solve the challenge. So you get two birds in one shot. You learn smart contract hacking by doing, and you learn to master the Foundry framework, which is the most common framework for smart contract development and security. Now, if this is the first video that you watch in my channel or in this series, I highly recommend recommend you to check out the first video in the series where I teach you how to get started with Ethernet and how to set up the Foundry environment repository and I will explain how we broadcast the transactions from Foundry to the actual Gorilla blockchain to solve the Ethernet challenge. Obviously, subscribe to the channel for more amazing content about smart contract hacking and security and now without further ado, let's solve the delegation challenge. So in the delegation challenge, we have one simple goal, which is to claim ownership of the instance of the smart contract that we are given. We have here three things that might help us. First, we need to learn how delegate low level call works in Solidity. We can look at the Solidity documentation. We need to learn how fallback methods works and what method IDs are and how to call them. Don't worry, I'm going to explain everything in this video. Now, this is the smart contract that we need to hack. And before observing it, first, I want to copy it to my local environment. In my folders, in the SRC folder, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it delegation.sol and just paste the smart contract that you just copied from the website. Now, here we have two smart contracts. We have delegate and delegation. We need to get ownership on the delegation smart contract. Let's see how it works. So this delegation smart contract has an owner and it also uses the delegate smart contract that we have here on top. In the constructor, we are receiving the delegate address, which is this smart contract address, and we are setting the delegate instance. We also set the owner to message sender, which is the account that deploys this smart contract, which is obviously, unfortunately, not us, but the Ethernet factory smart contract. Now here we have a fallback function. The thing with fallback function, that this is the default function that will be executed anytime someone calls this smart contract without specifying a signature hash. So if we just call it with empty data in the message data, this default fallback function will be executed. Now, what this fallback function does, as we can see, it makes a low level delegate call to the delegate smart contract. So we wrap the delegate instance with the address uh, to cast it. Then we call the delegate call a uh, function, low level function. We are forwarding the message data to this low level call and the result will be in this Boolean result. Then if result, then this. So we just make a delegate call to this delegate smart contract. Now let's take a look at this delegate smart contract. It also has an owner in, in the construction. We set the owner and he has also another function called pound, which is public. Anyone can call it. And basically, it sets the owner to message sender. But the thing is that we don't care that much about this delegate smart contract, but we do care about this delegation smart contract. We need to somehow to control the owner here, not here. So this pawn function does not really help us on the surface. In order to understand how it actually can help us, we need to understand how delegate call, how low level delegate call works. And by the way, if you want to take your skills in smart contract hacking and security to the next level and learn all these cool and amazing things to do it yourself, you should definitely check out the complete smart contract hacking course, which includes more than 50 hands on exercises connected to 30 chapters. One of them is obviously the EVM deep dive where we're going to learn about all those fallback functions and call low level calls and delegate calls. We also have this call attack and delegate call attacks where we explore something like this challenge, but more advanced and more solutions and more walkthroughs. So it's this course is the best course for you to master the skill of smart contract hacking. And of course, you're going to receive a certification on the end that will help you to showcase your skills and increase your chance of getting a smart contract auditor job in a Web3 firm. On top of that, you get access to the best Web3 security community out there to connect with other fellow students and other professionals in the space. You can 
ask questions, you can mingle, you can make connections and do everything in this all-in-one Discord community. Check out the limited time discount in the description below. Now let's understand how Delegate Call works. So here on the left, we have EOA external owned account, which is just an Ethereum wallet, which basically sends transactions. So here we have contract number A. We can see that the EOA account is calling the function A in contract A. It just doesn't send anything, zero ETH, zero message value. It doesn't send anything, okay? Just a simple call to this function in this smart contract. Now let's say that this function is executing delegate call to contract B to function B. Now the thing with delegate call is that the logic of function B is going to be executed, but the state of contract A is going to be updated. Our example, if here we have owner and also here we have owner and we are doing delegate call from the delegation contract to the delegate contract this and calling this pound message. So actually it's going to change instead of the owner in the delegate contract, it's going to change the owner in the delegation contract because this delegate call is going to be executed in the context and storage of contract A, which is the delegation contract. This is what's special about delegate call and it's very useful when we deal with proxies. So not only that the storage is updated in contract A, the message context is being reserved the same because we didn't do it just a normal call, but a delegate call, which means that the message sender in this function execution and the message value is still going to be the same like the EOA account. You already know that if we make a normal call, the message sender is going to be changed to contract A and the message value will be changed change based on what was forwarded in this call, but in delegate call, it doesn't work that way. The message context is going to stay the same like the previous chain, like here, like this first transaction. And the most important thing is that the storage is going to be updated in contract A instead of contract B. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And again, if you want more in detailed explanation and tutorials and lectures, you should check the smart contract hacking course. So now that we understand how the delegation works and that this delegate call is basically going to execute the whatever function that we pass in this delegate contract, but it's going to update the storage in this smart contract in the state of this smart contract, we have an idea of how to exploit it. We're simply just going to trigger the fallback function in the delegation smart contract and use our message data to trigger the pound function in the delegate smart contract. And eventually this pound function is going to update the owner in the delegation smart contract instead of the delegate smart contract. Let's see how we can do it. So I'm going to open here the script folder. I'm going to copy the template of level zero and I'm going to rename it instead of level zero to delegation solution. Now we need to change some stuff. First, we're gonna import delegation instead of level zero. I'm gonna change here the smart contract name. Here it will be delegation, delegation, and this will be also delegation. We're gonna remove here the address because we need to deploy a new instance of this particular level. And we're going to remove these lines of code and this line of code. We're gonna keep the start broadcast and stop broadcast because this is gonna allow us to broadcast the transactions eventually to the early blockchain. Now we'll head over to the Eternot website to get a new instance. I will submit the transaction using my MetaMask wallet, wait for it to be mined over here. And the transaction was mined, we got an instance address. I'm gonna copy it to my VS Code script file and paste it here in the delegation instance. Now that we have the delegation instance, we can work with it and send transactions to it. So the first thing I want to do is do console log, console log of the current owner of the delegation smart contract. So I'll do console.log and I will do current or something like owner before. And I want to basically fetch the owner of this smart contract. So I'll do delegation. Let's change it to delegation instance. And then I will do delegation instance dot owner. I will do the same for owner after. And in between, we need to run our exploit to basically trigger this pound function using the fallback function that we said before. So I'm going to basically do a low level call to this delegation instance. So I'll do address delegation instance dot I'm going to do this low level call because I need basically to set up the message data. We need to set a message data that eventually will trigger this pound function in this delegate smart contract. Because remember, we do here delegate call 
to the delegate smart contract and based on the message data the evm will know which function to execute so what data do we want to pass we want to pass abi.encode with signature and in this signature string we don't need to send any arguments to the pound function it's just a simple function that changes the owner based on the message sender as you can see so we just need to uh, basically give the signature string which is simply pawn now i want to make sure that the owner is actually my address so i'm going to do another console.log here and do my address and here we're going to take from the vm the env address from the environment variable this is going to be my address that is configured in the dot env file that's supposed to be it and now it's time to run the script and see if we can exploit the delegation smart contract so i'm going to run forge script script delegation and now it's going to fork the goerly blockchain to our local environment and try to run the script we're not going to broadcast the transaction yet beautiful we see that the owner before was probably the eternal factory but after we did this beautiful thing this exploitation calling the pound function through the fallback function we can see that the owner was changed to our address we had some issues with the forked uh, anchor uh, rpc network but we'll try to run it again without we don't mind because we're just gonna add here now the broadcast command to make sure that this script actions will be broadcasted to the actually go early blockchain we can already see here the logs that the owner before was this address and the owner after is actually our address we can see that the transaction was broadcasted to the goerly blockchain and now we're waiting for one receipt and the transaction was confirmed so now we can head over to the Ethernet website and click your submit instance confirm the metamask transaction and wait to see if we were actually able to achieve the required state which we should because we just saw it in the console log and we did it as you can see we have the well done message and the button was changed to go to next well level which means that you were successfully able to complete the six challenge in Ethernet, which is the delegation thank you so much for learning with me and if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash this like button in the bottom and subscribe to the channel for more amazing smart contract security content Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.